Let's put these 12 types of prayers into practice. The goal is to open your thoughts in a new way that the organized churches does not teach. Prayers first activate the spirit realm before they come into our realm. So while these prayers may seem fantastical, in the spirit realm they are heat-seeking weapons. Unlock your belief and know that what you pray for terrifies the enemy. What you pray for brings light into the darkness. Here is a prayer for repentance and confession of sins. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus, asking for forgiveness of my sins. I'm repenting for call out all the sins that you know you are currently participating in. I ask you to wash me clean from these sins. Guide me by your Holy Spirit to doing the things that are pleasing to you. Cleanse my mind so that I will have pure thoughts. Cleanse my tongue so that my speech may be pleasing to you. Cleanse my ears so that I will listen to only what you want me to hear. Wash my hands so I will only touch what you want me to touch. Wash my feet so that I will travel only where you would have me go and forgive me for moving towards evil. I accept the completed work of Jesus who died on the cross for all my sins. I consider myself clean in the eyes of the spiritual beings that are around me. I am a new creation and old things have passed away and there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. When they look at me, they see me clothed in the righteousness of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. This next prayer is called the Evening Prayer and is found in Dan Duval's book, Prayers That Shake Heaven and Earth, Book 1 of 3. It's also found on his website, BrideMovement.com. Dan has also cited the scriptures that are used in the prayer. Father, I come before you in prayer. I enter into your gates with thanksgiving and enter into your courts with praise. I praise you because you are worthy, holy, righteous, and just. I plead the blood of Jesus over myself, my dwelling place, my spouse, my children, my car, my bank accounts, and everything under my stewardship. I pray that your heavenly hosts, your angels, would guard this dwelling place round about, both above and below, and against every dimensional access point in Jesus' name. I will say of the Lord that you you are my refuge and my fortress, my God in you will I trust. I thank you that you set a hedge of protection round about me that no plague will come near my dwelling. I thank you in advance that every curse, hex, spell, incantation, voodoo, sorcery, form of witchcraft, dark art, or other form of weaponized demonic activity sent against me would be reversed upon the heads of the senders sevenfold that they would know that Jesus is Lord. Moreover, I pray that every human spirit, fallen angelic spirit, or otherwise malevolent spirit attempting to come against me or my household would be apprehended by your heavenly hosts such that they cannot so much as set foot upon this property. I pray that they would be escorted out to wherever the Lord Jesus sends them, pierced through with many arrows and discomfited by the lightning in the process that they would know that Jesus is Lord. Furthermore, I cancel and render powerless all attempts at mind-to-mind -mind communication, dream manipulation, and all other forms of psychic and telepathic intrusion in the name of Jesus. I thank you that all of my dreams are inspired by your Holy Spirit. I declare that my sleep will be sweet uninterrupted and that upon waking I will be well rested. I also put on the armor of light. I take up the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth. I declare that my feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And I take up the shield of faith to quench every fiery dart of the wicked one and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. I pray all of this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I come before you in prayer. I enter into your gates with thanksgiving and enter into your courts with praise. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name.
Jesus, I praise you because you are worthy, holy, righteous, and just. I plead the blood of Jesus over myself, my dwelling place, my spouse, my children, my car, my bank accounts, and everything under my stewardship. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. Revelation 12, verse 10. I pray that your heavenly hosts, your angels, would guard this dwelling place round about, both above and below, and against every dimensional access point in Jesus' name. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. 2 Kings chapter 6 verse 17 I will say of the Lord that you are my refuge and my fortress, my God in you will I trust. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him will I trust. Psalms chapter 91 verse 2 I thank you that you set a hedge of protection round about me that no plague will come near my dwelling. There shall no evil befall thee neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Psalm chapter 91 verse 10. I thank you in advance that every curse, hex, spell, incantation, voodoo, sorcery, form of witchcraft, dark art, or other form of weaponized demonic activity sent against me would be reversed upon the heads of the senders sevenfold that they would know that Jesus is Lord. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way, and flee before thee seven ways. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 7 Moreover, I pray that every human spirit, fallen angelic spirit, or otherwise malevolent spirit attempting to come against me or my household would be apprehended by your heavenly hosts, such that they cannot so much as set foot upon this property. Demons are not the only spirits lurking around. The devil also has human agents that do much of their work out of body. This is sometimes called astral projection. I also assign angels to apprehend fallen angels and other malevolent spirits attempting to come against me. I pray that they would be escorted out to wherever the Lord Jesus sends them, pierced through with many arrows and discomfited by the lightning in the process that they would know that Jesus is Lord. Yea, he sent out his arrows and scattered them, and he shot out lightnings and discomfited them. Psalm 18, verse 14. Furthermore, I cancel and render powerless all attempts at mind-to-mind -mind communication, dream manipulation, and all other forms of psychic and telepathic intrusion in the name of Jesus. Psychic phenomena, telepathy, and other forms of mind-to-mind -mind communication. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. I thank you that all of my dreams are inspired by your Holy Spirit. God spoke on many occasions in the Bible through dreams. For instance, he spoke to Jacob in a dream in Genesis 46, 2. And he spoke to Daniel in a dream in Daniel 7, verse 7 and 7, verse 13. I declare that my sleep will be sweet uninterrupted, and that upon waking I will be well rested. When thou liest down, you shall not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. Proverbs 3, verse 24. I also put on the armor of light. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Romans 13, verse 12. I take up the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth. I declare that my feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and I take up the shield of faith to quench every fiery dart of the wicked one and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, 
and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Ephesians 6, 13-17 I pray all of this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. John chapter 14, verse 13. Anointing Oil Use of the anointing oil is biblical. The oil was used to anoint kings. It is an offering to God. Commissioning someone into their calling. It is a symbol of imparting a blessing. If you see yourself being anointed in dreams or a vision, you know God is imparting a blessing. It is used for sanctification. It can be used for deliverance and healing. It is used in worship. Anointing oil versus the holy anointing oil. Exodus 30, verse 22 to 33. The Lord spoke to Moses. Take choice spices, 12 and a half pounds of free flowing myrrh, half that, about six and a quarter pounds of sweet-smelling cinnamon, six and a quarter pounds of sweet-smelling cane, and twelve and a half pounds of cassia, all weighed according to the sanctuary shekel, and four quarts of olive oil. You are to make this into a sacred anointing oil, a perfumed compound. The work of the perfumer, it will be sacred anointing oil. With it, you are to anoint the tent of meeting, the ark of the testimony, the table and all its utensils, the lampstand and its utensils, the altar of incense, the altar for the burnt offering and all its utensils, and the laver and its base. So you are to sanctify them, and they will be most holy. Anything that touches them will be holy. You are to anoint Aaron and his sons and sanctify them so that they may minister as my priests. You are to tell the Israelites, this is to be my sacred anointing oil throughout your generations. It must not be applied to people's bodies and you must not make any like it with the same recipe. It is holy and it must be holy to you. Whoever makes perfume like it, and whoever puts any of it on someone not a priest, will be cut off from his people. Because I read this, you're going to go out and find these ingredients, aren't you? <laughs> but we are commanded not to make any like it for ourselves. These were used for the tabernacle. Olive oil was the main oil used in anointing. So feel free to perfume your oil, but don't follow that recipe. Make your own oil, make it your own, and this is how you will prepare and pray over the oil. Take a separate bottle of oil and call it unto the Holy Spirit, and invite him into the room. Once you feel the presence, your body will have a tingling. Then begin praying. Holy Spirit, I know that all power comes from you. Every anointing comes from you. I ask that you would bless this anointing oil for use as I pray over myself, my family, my friends, my home, and others. I pray that you would use it as an agent of your love and mercy towards us. I'm doing this according to your word in James chapter 5 verse 14, where you say that we should anoint with oil when we pray over the sick. I also do this as a symbol of your protection over my home and my family. It is a representation 
of your blood, Jesus, that covers. I know that this is completely powerless until you've rested on it and made it holy. So I'm asking you to rest upon it and make it holy. I'm setting it aside as consecrated and holy only for your work, Lord. I thank you for blessing it and enriching it with your spirit. Speak to me whenever you need me to use this oil. I pray that in the spirit realm, it is seen as a symbol of your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. How to anoint your home and property. Here's what you do. Take the anointing oil, and over every window and door to your house, just put the sign of the cross in the corner of it. You don't need to put it in the center from top to bottom or anything like that. Next thing you know, winter rolls around, and your visitors are seeing a giant congealed oil mark on your windows and doors. <laughs> Truly, just take it easy. Putting it on the corner is fine. Today, Jews are using a Metsuza at the door, and it's not that big. Anyway, as you're putting this mark, you just need to pray a simple prayer as you make the sign of the cross. With the sign of the cross, I am making a declaration that this house belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ, that no sickness, death, theft, evil or malevolent technology can enter this home. This oil is a symbol of the blood of Jesus Christ. No weapons that are formed against us or this property shall prosper, and any destruction must pass over us in Jesus' name. We are safe and protected under the blood of Jesus. Next, anoint some wooden stakes for the purpose of marking your land. Go out unto your land and stake the land for Jesus, making the same declaration. Staking your land will create a border in the spirit realm and in this realm. The prayer doesn't have to be exactly like this, but you get the idea. You can include some of the dimensional aspects like Dan Duval has, but the point is that Jesus owns the house and the land, and the oil is a symbol of his blood, giving protection and covering to its occupants. Now I have to warn you, this is not a joke. Once you pray the prayer, don't be surprised that some people can no longer come to your house. Plans will just automatically get cancelled. Keep your eyes open and don't force them to come to your house either. God is just revealing to you that there is something on them. Remember, you gave him the house. It is all in the spirit realm, and our war is not against flesh and blood. They won't know why or even realize they can no longer come into your house, but you know because you prayed this prayer. Other uses for anointing oil. So let's say you want to receive dreams and visions from God. You can anoint the temple side of your head and your forehead and pray asking him to give you dreams before you go to bed. Anoint your ears to help you hear God. You can also do the same things over your eyelids if you are praying to see in the spirit realm. To receive the gift of healing, you can anoint the palms of your hand, or if you are being commissioned to write a book, you can anoint your hands as well before you start writing. The idea is to anoint the area where you need the empowerment or impartation. Anoint your transportation, and not your children's transportation. The same applies if you are praying over someone who is sick. You can anoint that area, if it is appropriate, of course. House Cleaning Prayer Before you clean your house with prayer, you must first cleanse yourself spiritually by performing a prayer of repentance. Then you may begin cleaning the house. These are the steps for the prayer. Put on the armor of God. You need to ask God for angelic assistance. You need to open your windows and doors and tell the spirits to leave. You need to close all the portals 
that the evil spirits are using to enter your home, you need to anoint all the windows and doors with oil. Father God, I come to you in Jesus' name, putting on your full armor so that I can take my stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of darkness in this world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. I put on the full armor of God, so that in this day of evil I may stand my ground, standing firm with the belt of truth buckled around my waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with my feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, I take up the shield of faith with which I can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. God, I ask you to give me the gift of discerning of spirits so that I may remove all the evil spirits from my home. The only spirit that can live here are the ones who are still in the land of the living and bow to the name of Jesus. I ask that your Holy Spirit dwell here with me and my family and that you will lead and guide us through this process today. Please send angelic assistance to help with the removal of all these evil spirits. Send the angels to war on my behalf and handle any demonic powers that we cannot handle. Start opening all the windows and doors in your home, or at least one in each room. I command every evil spirit to leave this home now in the name of Jesus. You cannot stay here. You have no part in me. I renounce you and any other spirits that come with you. If the Holy Spirit specifically impresses upon you a particular spirit or spirits, make sure to command them to leave by name. Example, spirit of infirmity, addiction, sexual immorality, poverty, suicide, anything that comes to mind, call it by name and tell it to leave in the name of Jesus. Now you go room by room with the anointing oil. All the doors and windows at the top or corner with the sign of the cross. Over each door and window you say this, I close this door or window in the spirit realm to any evil spirit. No longer shall you use this as an access point to gain entrance into this home. Only angels assigned by the commander of heaven's armies are allowed to enter this home. I mark the sign of the cross as a reminder to you that this house is covered under the blood of Jesus, and you shall pass over it and never enter into this house again, in Jesus' name. Go through your entire house and do this for every window and door. If you come across items as you're going through the house that give you a feeling that a spirit may be attached to it, you need to remove it from your home. Just as you have doors in the natural, there are doorways that spirits can use to go in and out of your house. This could be mirrors, so you need to take oil, put it on your index finger and make the cross at the top of the mirror or in a corner of the mirror and say, if this is a doorway in the spirit realm that evil spirits are using to enter this house, I close it in the name of Jesus. You can no longer use this as a doorway. This is a mirror, an inanimate object that will never be used as a spiritual portal again. I command it to be closed in Jesus' name. That's it. Once you have gone through all the rooms in your home, those spirits will be gone, and you can start closing the windows and doors in your house. This is quite the process, but you will feel so much peace in your home after you do this, and you should no longer have any spirits in your home. These are just some examples of prayers that you can use and pass on to your friends and fellow brothers and sisters. If you require more prayers, I highly 
encourage you to seek out Derek Prince's books, missionariesofprayer.org, Dan Duval's books, and feel free to visit the Telegram channel, link in the description. I could keep reading prayers, but this video has given you a fantastic starting point. Thank you for taking the time to listen, and I pray this has helped you bring yourself closer to God in your prayer life. God bless you and your family in these very difficult times ahead. Ah, one more thing. I'll leave you with one last prayer, and I do suggest you participate. This is Derek Prince's deliverance prayer. Perform it multiple times, and it will be in the library as well. God bless. All right, now I'm going to ask you to say this prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, I believe that you are the Son of God and the only way to God, that you died on the cross for my sins and rose again from the dead. I now confess to you any sins of which you have made me conscious. All sins committed by my ancestors. Now just take a little while and be as thorough as you can. Confess anything specific that the Holy Spirit brings to your mind. Quietly. You don't have to tell anybody else. All right, now we're going on. The next thing is repentance. Lord, I repent of all sins I have ever committed. I hate them and I turn from them. I turn to you, Lord Jesus, for mercy and forgiveness. If I have been involved with the occult, I repent, I repent and I renounce it and I, renounce and I sever myself from it myself through the blood of Jesus. If I have occult objects in my possession, I commit myself to get rid of them. Now the next one is forgiving other people. Lord. I forgive any person who has ever harmed me or wronged me. I forgive them just as I want you to forgive me. Now take a little while and name the persons that you need to forgive. And the name that's hardest is the one you most need to say. All right, we're going on. Lord, to the best of my ability, I have met your conditions. And I now claim your promise. Whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. I'm calling on you now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Deliver me from all evil spirits. I hate them. They are not my friends. They are my enemies. And I command them to go from me now. In the name of Jesus. Now you let them go. I'll command them to go. Don't go on praying. Get rid of them. Now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Under the authority of the leadership of this conference. I come against every evil spirit that has been renounced in the name of Jesus. I command you to come out. Release them. Go from them. In the name of Jesus. Let them go. Let them go. You've been defeated by the blood of Jesus. You have been defeated by the blood of Jesus. Jesus Christ is Lord over this gathering. You have to obey the word of God. 
You have to obey the servants of God. We stand against you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. All your demons, you have to go in Jesus' name. Now I'm going to deal with specific categories. I'm going to start with the occult, with all forms of witchcraft. If it's not come out, let it go now. Now, in the name of Jesus, we come against all occult spirits, yes. every form of witchcraft, sorcery, divination. Get out in the name of Jesus. Get out in the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. You bow before the name of Jesus. Release these people. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. That's right. That's right. You have to go. You have to go. You have to go. Jesus defeated you when he died and shed his blood and rose from the dead. Satan, you are subject to us. In the name of Jesus, every spirit of witchcraft, divination, sorcery, out in the name of Jesus. Go. Release these people. I will in a minute. Every spirit of false religion, out in the name of Jesus. You have to go. You have to go. In the name of Jesus. That's right. Then rebellion. There are many of you young people here tonight who have a spirit of rebellion. Come out. Go from them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, every spirit of fear, say this, God has not given me a spirit of fear. I renounce any spirit of fear. And I command it to go in the name of Jesus. No. Let it go. Out. Out in the name of Jesus. Out. 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 That's right. Hate it. Hate it. Hate it. It's not your friend. Every spirit of grief. Out. In the name of Jesus. Every spirit of loneliness. Depression, rejection, come out! Every spirit of suicide, come out! Now then. I want you to say, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Are you there? I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Now, every spirit of death, come out. Go from these people. Release them in the name of Jesus. Release them in the name of Jesus. Release them. Every spirit of death. Amen. Come out. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Destruction. Self-destruction. Out. In the name of Jesus. That's right. I'm out. You shall not destroy the people of God. They're God's property. You release them and go from them. Now we're going to deal with resentment and all the ones that go with that. Every spirit of resentment, come out. Every spirit of resentment, in the name of Jesus, release these people. Go from them, in Jesus' name. Unforgiveness, anger, 
hatred, violence, and murder come out in the name of Jesus. The spirit of murder bow before the name of Jesus and come out. Go from them in the name of Jesus. Out, out, out. Some of you need to say several times to yourself, I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Say it for yourself. Be determined. Now, if there are any women here that have deliberately procured an abortion to be delivered, you have to confess it as murder. And you'll be delivered from the spirit of murder and of death. If you confess it to God, you don't have to confess it to us. <coughs> you can be delivered. Now, Lord, we come against the spirits of murder that have caused women to murder their own babies in Jesus' name. You get out of this place. You go from this place. We don't re entertain you. We give you no room. We offer you no mercy. You have to go, go, go in Jesus' name. Now we're going to deal with the negative emotions. Disappointment. You, any spirit of disappointment here, we break your hold <coughs> over the people of God in Jesus' name. L loneliness, misery, depression, self-destruction, out, especially depression. Come out, depression. Loose them in the name of Jesus. Loose them in the name of Jesus. There's many spirits of depression here tonight. Out. You go in Jesus' name. You release the people of God. All right. We're going to deal with the ones that affect the mind. Lord, we come against those spirits that torment the mind. Unbelief. Doubt. Compromise. Forgetfulness, confusion, torment, and insanity, insanity, you come out. Out, out, amen, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I'm going to come against insanity again. That's right. Every spirit of insanity, you come out! Now, God has shown me there's a witch here tonight. I'm not going to point you out, but this is your last opportunity. If you don't renounce your trade as a witch tonight, you'll perish forever in hell. Out! In the name of Jesus, out! 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 In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to deal with the tongue. Every lying spirit, come out. Not only the ones that make you tell lies, but the ones that lie to you. Tell you God doesn't love you. You can't be healed. There's no hope for you. There's a lying spirit. Renounce them in the name of Jesus. Every spirit that counterfeits sickness and tells healed people that they're still sick, you leave them in the name of Jesus. You release them. Go from them in Jesus' name. Every spirit of cursing and blasphemy, out in the name of Jesus. And every church-going spirit of gossip and criticism, come out. Humble yourself and acknowledge you're a gossip, you're a tailbearer. God hates tailbearing. There's no place for you in heaven unless you renounce it and get delivered from it. God hates those who sow discord between brethren. 
You need to repent. You're very religious, but you're also very wicked. <clears throat> All right, we come to the area that no one ever talks about, sex. All right, we're, we're going on with our program. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And first of all, we're going to start with masturbation. Every spirit of masturbation, Jesus. in the name of Jesus, you go from these people. Release them. Release their fingers. Release their hands. Release their sexual organs in the name of Jesus. Out. Out. Don't be proud. Don't be proud. If it's in your fingers, shake it out. Let it go. That's right. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You've got to hate it. It's not your friend. It's your enemy. That's right. Get it out. Let it go. In the name of Jesus. Through the blood of Jesus. Be determined. Be absolutely determined. You are not going to tolerate it any longer. It has no place in you. Your body has been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. And then we come to the other sins, fornication, adultery, out. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. There's no place in heaven for fornicators and adulterers. Amen. Every spirit of homosexuality, yes. out. In the name of Jesus, out. In the name of Jesus, you go, you go, you go. Amen. Amen. Every spirit of pornography. Now there are several here tonight who are bound and enslaved by pornography. Renounce it. Let it go from you. What you do in secret, God sees. There are no secrets with God. Some of you are churchgoers, but you're pornography viewers. Out! Renounce it. Renounce it. In the name of Jesus. Amen. What about taking a few moments to thank God for what He's done? Thank you, Lord.